Good evening, church. We're continuing our study in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily <clears throat> at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alm. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, saying, Look on us. And he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something of them. And Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones rece received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that he w that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at, at that which had happened to him. Healing. Father, we come before you in the name of your son, Jesus, Lord. Father, I ask you to anoint me to preach. Anoint those that will listen. <clears throat> to understand, to comprehend. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. This is the first healing recorded in the book of Acts. After the day of Pentecost, this is the first healing recorded. Peter and James went into the temple at the hour of prayer, which was three o'clock. And they saw this man that was lame from his mother's womb. And he fixed his eyes on Peter. And Peter said, silver and gold have I not. He asked them for an alm, which was money. This is how he supported himself because he could not work. So he asked them of an alm. And Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give thee unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And immediately, he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. Think about this man, y'all. He was lame from his mother's womb. And it was another day. He wasn't expecting anything except to receive alms. He didn't realize that 3 o'clock the Lord was going to perform a miracle. He didn't realize that, that, that the Lord had a divine appointment for him at 3 o'clock that afternoon with two of his disciples, Peter and John. And he would look up at Peter with his hand out asking alms. And Peter would say, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, I give thee unto you, rise up and walk. The Bible says everybody that saw him was filled with wonder and amazement at that at that which had happened to him. See, these people knew this man. They had seen him daily. And now he was never able to walk. He was never able to move on his own. And yet now he comes into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. And the people were amazed and said, 
they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened to him. When God heals a body, it's a miracle. And oftentimes he uses that miracle not only for that individual, but for the people around him. He had never been able to walk. He had never been able to, to take care of himself. And now in a blink of an eye, his whole world got changed for the better. Peter would go on to say in verse 12, because all these people marveled at what had happened. Peter would say in verse 12 of chapter 3, And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this, or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had, we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God has raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses and his name through faith in his name has has made this man strong whom you see and know yea the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all now brethren i wrought that through ignorance you did it and did also your rulers but those things which god before has showed by the mouth of his prophets that Christ should suffer has been fulfilled. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. See, God used this man's healing for Peter to have the opportunity to preach the gospel to the Jews. See, God doesn't just heal a body just to heal a body, church. He used the healing of this man to preach the gospel unto, to Israel, to the Jews. Did they accept? No, as, we, as we'll find out in, in Acts 4, they ended up arrested for it. See, they go and they, they heal this man and everybody's glorifying. But when they mention that they denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer and granted him unto you and they killed the Prince of Life, that joy that they now had turned to wrath. They were under conviction and they didn't know how to handle it. See, healing should be preached about, but ultimately it cannot circumvent the preaching of the gospel. The preaching of the gospel is what saves the soul. The healing does not. Yes, the Lord used this man being healed to allow Peter to preach the gospel to the Jews. Unfortunately, they rejected it. But they still had the opportunity to accept Christ because of this man's testimony that the Lord had just healed. Had the Lord not healed his body, would Peter and John have had the opportunity to preach the gospel to these people?
we look at healing today and we think, well, healing is for just that individual. No, it's not. When you see somebody physically healed by the power of God, it will do one of two things. It will inspire faith in which there is a person that should be able to preach the gospel or it will, and that gospel will either be received or rejected. See, this man's healing was a, was an avenue for Peter to preach the gospel to the Jews in the temple. Because they had all gathered to see this man praising God. So Peter would take the opportunity to preach the gospel to them. And yet, they were filled with wonder and amazement in chapter 10, or in verse 10. But yet, at the beginning of chapter 4, Peter and John were arrested. That goes to show that miracles don't save. Peter would preach the gospel to them and they would reject it and have them arrested for preaching the gospel. But yet they had just seen a miracle by this man being raised from the dead, from from being lame from his mother the bible says from his mother's womb he was lame they knew this man they knew that he could not walk but yet they see a miracle of him being healed and they listen to peter preach but yet they reject what peter has to say they're grateful for the man being healed, but they want no part of the one that healed him. Because it's Jesus that healed him. They don't want him. See, oftentimes we, we're the same way. We seek the Lord for a healing or for blessing or whatever the case, but we really don't surrender to him. We really don't surrender to him. We, we see his miracles. We see all this stuff, and that's what we desire. We desire the miracle, but we don't desire intimate relationship. We desire the miracle and the healing and the and the the touch but we don't want the inward change that is demanded to be born again david would say it like this create create in me a clean heart the psalmist would say he would replace the heart of stone with the heart of flesh. Speaking of the born again experience. But I'm afraid we've gotten to the point with the modern church, just like these people in, in, in Acts 3. We want the miracles, we want the manifestations, but we don't want the heart change. We don't want the cross for sanctification. We don't want to accept him as baptizer with the Holy Spirit. We accept him as, as savior. We accept him as, as healer, but we don't, ex we don't accept him as baptizer with the Holy Spirit and soon coming king and king now of our hearts now 
We want to live like we want to live. We don't want to submit to him. The reality of it is he can heal a body. But if there's no heart change at the end of the day, that individual will still die lost. The heart, the Bible says the heart is deceitfully wicked who can know it. It's deceitfully wicked because of sin, because of the fall. And the only way it can be, like David said, replaced with the heart of flesh is by being born again. We can see all the miracles we want. The miracles don't change the heart. The preaching of the gospel under the anointing of the Holy Spirit changes the heart. They were they were happy that he had got healed, but then the next chapter they literally turn on Peter and John because of the name that they preached. Can can, can you imagine? You 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 have a man healed from a lifelong disability and the very next chapter you're arresting the men that Jesus used to heal that body because you didn't like what they were preaching conviction ultimately does one of two things it will draw us to Christ or it will harden our hearts and turn us further from him. The choice is up to us. Do we allow the conviction of the Holy Spirit to change us or do we take off in the opposite direction and run? The choice is ours. And unfortunately, we, we see over and over in the book of Acts the healings would take place, deliverance would take place, and yet that when they got through preaching the gospel, they wouldn't accept Christ. The crowds wouldn't accept Christ. They had seen his power by these people being set free, but yet when the gospel is preached, they don't accept it. Some few did. Most didn't. It's still the same today. The Bible says narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. Broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be that go in there at. But we we we've been we've been looking for the miracles. We've been looking for the signs and the wonders. Christ isn't enough. We want the signs and the wonders before we believe. Christ should be enough. Christ is enough. Because see, when we accept Christ, the greatest power of all, which is that of sin, is broken. It's not necessarily the physical healing that he deals with first. It's the heart change that is needed because of sin. And, and, and oftentimes we get saved and we think, well, Everything's just going to fall off. That's not, that's usually not how he works. Some things will immediately fall off. Other things will not. But the thing is, the same way we got saved, faith in Christ and what he did at the cross, is the same way we 
persevere until he delivers us completely. This is this sanctification process. But we've gotten to the point in the church where we want to see naturally the miracles. The greatest miracle that there ever was, church, is the saving of a soul. And you can't outwardly see that. Yes, there will be changes. But you can't see what the Lord has done on the inside of that individual's heart. But we want to see visually what happened. That's why we gravitate toward these healing revivals and all this stuff. We want to see his power, but we don't want to be changed by it. We want to experience his power moving through us to see the miracles, but we don't want to be changed and transformed and conformed into the image of Christ, which is ultimately his desire. Once again, what good does it do for him to heal a, a, a body and that soul die and go to hell? Will there ever come a time when sin will not have an issue over us? No. Not until we die of the Trump silence, whichever comes first. But the Bible does say, according to Romans 6, that sin shall not have dominion over us, for we are not under law but under grace. Grace gives the Holy Spirit our faith in Christ. And what he did at the cross gives the Holy Spirit latitude to go to work and clean us up, Romans 8. But if all we're looking for is the next sign and wonder, we're going to miss being transformed into the image of Christ, which is ultimately the end goal. Yes, physical healing is for today. Yes, the gifts of the Spirit are for today. But if there is no heart change, if there aren't souls coming to Christ, what good does it do? Jesus would say it like this, the fields are wide unto harvest. Send laborers into the harvest. We don't want the harvest, but we want the miracles. We have our priorities backward. We don't want the soul. We want the miracles. But what we fail to understand is when we receive that miracle and when the Lord uses us to perform said miracle, what happens Six weeks down the line, six months down the line, whenever it may be, that that individual falls into sin. Because they weren't taught how to have victory over sin. What we're seeking God for miracles. Instead of preaching the instead of preaching the gospel and allowing His Holy Spirit to transform lives and set free people, because He can't set people free unless the gospel is preached. We have it backward. We think that the healings is the gospel. It's not. The healings are an outflow of the gospel, but it's not the gospel. Likewise, like I read to y'all, Peter desired to get these people saved after the man got healed. And yet it 
they they arrested Peter and John because of it. See, they wanted the miracles, but they don't want the name of Jesus mentioned. We have the same mindset today. We want the miracles. We go to conference after conference after conference. We want to be prophetically trained. So we spend no telling how much money going to profit after profit after profit after profit after profit. There's no desire for a heart change. We want to be taught how to cast out devils and how to heal the sick and how to do da 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 But we don't want to live proper. We don't want to give up what he's asking us to give up. But we also have to realize when he starts dealing with us, I want you to give that up. We can't do it on our own. And that's where the real battle begins. Because we, when he speaks to us and says, hey, I want you to give that up. We start trying to eradicate it ourselves. Not realizing it was already dealt with at the cross. And our faith in that then allows the Holy Spirit to come in and clean us up. Matthew 3. But we don't want to be cleaned up. We want to be used. We want to be seen. But we don't want to be transformed. Peter and John or Peter would preach the gospel and yet Peter and John because of it would both be arrested. It went from being a glorious day. This man had been healed by the power of God and it ends with Peter and John being arrested for preaching the gospel. Once again, the heart is deceitfully wicked who can know it. Is healing for today? Yes. But it can never take the place of preaching the gospel. Ever. Because the soul is much more important than the healing of the body. The soul will live forever, either in heaven or hell. The body, even despite being healed, will still decay and still eventually die unless the trump sounds first. So once again, what good does it do to have the physical healing and die lost? Silver and gold have I not. But such as I have, I give thee unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And then a short while later, they were arrested for preaching. The gospel. The gospel is an offense, church. Paul said the message of the cross is an offense. And if he preached any other gospel, then the offense of the cross has ceased. There's a reason the apostle Paul said, I am determined to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Because it's Jesus Christ in him crucified that sets free from sin. It's faith in Christ and what he did at the cross that allows the Holy Spirit to come in and deal with 
our hearts on an individual level. It's not anybody else's business what a fellow believer is dealing with. Period. Because ultimately, we can pray for them. We can lift them up before the Lord. We can't set them free. Jesus has got to do that. But we look down on people that are struggling with whatever sin. We need to be lifting them up before the Lord. And seeking the Lord to deliver them. But we want to perform the miracles. We want to, we want to touch, we want to touch from the Lord so we can, so we can heal, so we can touch and then be healed. Why do we want that? Is it so Jesus is glorified in it? Or is it so we can get the glory? Because y'all, let me tell you something. Once again, the Apostle Paul said, God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom I was crucified unto the world and the world unto me. The only thing the Apostle Paul gloried in was Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's it. But yet we see people glorifying in, look at the miracle I performed. The only, the only, mm, it's not up to us to perform the miracle and we don't get the credit for it. That credit is his and his alone. So if he desires to use us with one of the nine gifts of the Spirit, it is for his glory, not ours. This man got healed. That had been that had been lame from his mother's womb, healed by the power of God, and yet one chapter later, Peter and John are arrested for preaching the gospel. So what am I saying? Healings don't have the power to save. Healings point us or should point us to the preaching of the gospel. And how we handle the preaching of the gospel is what really counts. Do we accept him by faith or do we spurn it and say, I don't want it? Choice is ours. But the preaching of the gospel is what saves the soul. It's not the healing of the body, as important as that is. The Lord can use that to usher in the preaching of the gospel, but the preaching of the gospel is what gives the Holy Spirit latitude to set people free from sin. We have to stop seeking the Lord for healing and for the gifts instead of seeking him for a harvest. Once again, the fields are white under harvest, but the laborers are few because we want to be seen. We want to perform the miracles. We want to perform this. We want to perform that so that we get the glory. He won't share his glory with anybody. Period. Point blank. Do we want to harvest? Or do we want to be seen? 
Do we want his glory? Or do we want a pat on the back? Do we want more of him? <clears throat> or are we using him to grow a platform? When they when they look at at Peter and John. They almost put them on a pedestal and they had to knock them down. Because they literally later in the book of Acts will get there eventually said that they're gods. And Peter and John had to say, no, we're not. We're human just like you are. We're sinful just like you are. We have got to stop putting anybody, but more so ministers of the gospel on a pedestal. Because eventually they fall. We're not perfect. Yes, we're held to a higher standard. Because of the office we hold. But we are not perfect, church. There is one person that deserves to be worshipped, and he is Christ. Whatever gifts that the Lord allows me to partake in, he gets the glory for. It's not so we can heap it upon ourselves. We can't save. We can't heal. He can. Father, I come before you in the name of your son, Jesus. Father, thank you for this word. Lord, if there's anybody listening, Father, because you know who this will reach. That 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 know that knew you but has walked away. Lord, draw them back to you by the power of your spirit. Convict. Draw them back to you. Save. Set free. And deliver because it was paid for by death at Calvary. Our freedom was paid for. Our victory over sin was paid for. Our healing physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever the case, was paid for at Calvary by death. Father, let us continue to seek you, not for our glory, but for the glory of you. Father, the, the fields are wide unto harvest. Give us laborers for the harvest. Give us laborers for the harvest that don't care whether we get the glory or not so that you get the glory because the glory is yours and nobody else's. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I will see y'all Sunday morning.